coming to this little gathering. Um, the idea behind this, so first of all, for who, the people who don't know me, I'm Ian Alana Griggs. I have the Wish House in West Cornwall for the past 26 years, um, in around the block here. And um, tonight I'm here as the Vice EDC Chair, uh, as Simon Hewitt had to be in New York. Um, the EDC has decided to do gatherings like this again. It's to ignite and reignite business relationships, to collaborate, to get to meet one another, to keep on building a strong community, and um, with that to become more and more of an attractive place again for families to move here, for people to visit on a regular basis so that we all can thrive. Um, the EDC has been this past year doing a lot of outreach to local businesses, bringing a business to each EDC meeting um, to listen to where they stand, what their situation is, what their hopes and dreams are. And while you know, most of you probably don't want to watch the EDC meetings, maybe the first 15 minutes are interesting to watch, um, to get to know some of these local businesses that you have no idea about. Um, but they could be resources, because in my experience, people come to me, people call me up and say, hey, have you, do you know where I can get this? What, you know, and so I often wind up interconnecting people because I know some of my resources, my neighboring businesses. Um, that information can always be found on the cornwallct.org website. Um, the videos are all there. Um, the Cornwall City Facebook page or the Cornwall Community Network. Um, you can also, if you want to get more involved with the EDC, come to the meetings as the public, because there's always at the end of each meeting a um, public comment, and that gets you a bit more involved, perhaps, with the business community, and gives us an idea, of, you know, all of us, an idea of where we are headed as as a community, as a town. Is a business community or regular, I mean, most of us are in some <coughs> some kind of a business. Um, that's about it. I would like to thank the library for allowing us to host this, and uh, Mayor Rubin, and the absent uh, Neil Fraunglass, who has been very instrumental in doing a lot of the, the Facebook postings for organizing the event, and Jane Harold, who ultimately put together the uh, mailing list so that we could send out postcards. Um, and with that, I would like to hand it over to Ward Ridgeway, our first selectman, to give us an update on our town ongoings, so that we all get to some kind of <laughs> thank you, Bianca, and thank you all for coming. I think I may be the only one here that knows everybody in the room, so that makes me think I'm doing my job, because part of my job is, is staying in touch with people that make this town go. Um, one of our challenges is we're spread out among three to six different little villages in Cornwall, so getting everybody together, organized, is, is also an ongoing um, issue, but it's good to see everybody here and see the overlap of what we're trying to do because the EDC, the EDC was um, was formed by the town. I think we were one of the first towns to have it of our size to have an economic development commission because you don't think of a town of 1,500 people, everybody's generally happy. What are, you, what are you doing? But it was after the downturn of 2008. And it was a challenging time, and it still can be a challenging time for businesses in Cornwall. And we felt, we as a town, town meeting, felt that it was good to have business have a seat at the table. When the town makes decisions, certainly the businesses that everybody relies on uh, in town should be represented. 
Uh, so it's been through a succession of people and efforts, and it's it's strong. It's it's great to have advocates here in town for businesses, uh, for our services, because we've seen businesses come and go. It's great to see the National Iron Bank here, 175th anniversary. Uh, we see all. Does everybody have that kind of record? Uh, but uh, that's that's a long time. Trinity Camp is here. Started in 1914 uh, as a camp, and now it's a retreat center. But again, the continuity of some of these businesses do give Cornwall a bit of its character, a bit of its uh, uniqueness, and contribute so much to us uh, because a lot of them are are different and they overlap in in what they offer the town. And I just know from uh, what we have gathered here tonight, uh, Cornwall does have one of the highest rates of self-employed people of any community in the town, and the town took that seriously and has made it easier. In the last couple of years, we revised some of the home business regulations to make it easier for people to work in their, in their homes, out of their homes, uh, because we rely on not just the, the retail businesses, but also the self-employed businesses that many people um, are part of. And I think um, and I think that that's one of the interesting parts of uh, <clears throat> you know my job and this um, and that's I guess one thing I'd like to say too is don't feel uh, feel free to give me a call like this like on Monday Mohawk uh, management called up and said they were having problems with their uh, service, their internet service, and that was making their customers uh, unable to do transactions. And you can imagine on a busy, packed weekend mm -hmm. what that was like. So, within 24 hours, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But within 24 hours, they were talking to somebody in Texas, and the next day they had somebody there to help to sort things out. And not that I can promise to be able to move telecommunication companies in the right direction, mm -hmm. but just sometimes I'm able to connect people to resources, and Ronnie called up this morning, said there was a drainage problem by the new market, which we're all trying, mm -hmm. I will, we're trying to uh, help get back into business, because, because again, where I'm coming from is probably 15 years ago, that market closed, was empty, and if it wasn't for James and Adela picking up the torch, we would have lost a place <coughs> to gather, to have food, and that kind of thing. And it's, so it's really important to people who are paying attention to foster a positive business environment because it interacts, it's, it's the lifeblood in the town in so many ways. So whatever we can do um, to, in this case, talk to DOT, talk to some neighbors, whatever, we, what I, whatever I can do, whatever the town can do to cut through some of the maybe unobvious uh, avenues to help you all do what you need to do and get on your way um, helping us have a you know a robust community. So a couple of other things the town's uh, doing. We are, as you probably know, underway with a big uh, project, big for Cornwall, uh, redoing the uh, septic or providing septic to uh, West Cornwall. So that's going to be a big thing. Again, we've seen some you know positive, long-term, slow but steady improvement of of life there. It was great to see the New Haven Register come out to Little West Cornwall and hear hammers banging away at the uh, at the pink house roof and see three or four new businesses. That's the other thing too. I think there's there's a, probably half the room here, I think, are businesses that have that are have been in business for less than ten years. So it's not just the older businesses, but it's nurturing everything from you know canoe rentals to beer bottling to internet businesses, to potteries, to uh, carding businesses, uh, to silk screens, and uh, like I've got my three guys boots on, which I proudly show off whenever I can. Uh, so having a footwear place in town and somebody in a place that people can get outdoor gear. We are trying to re-image, re-promote Cornwall as sort of an outdoor capital of Northwest of Connecticut, and it's working. I mean, if you told me 10 or 15 years ago we'd have one bike store in town successful, let alone two with a ski shop, I would have said, well, maybe, but you know, <laughs> here we are. And I think wherever I go around town, 
Cornwall has a very positive image to many people throughout the place. People have had romantic interludes near the Cornwall Covered Bridge. They were very annoyed when it got wrapped and hit. Um, I heard from people all over the state of how they feel a connection to this place, uh, which is a, a real asset to us. And, uh, you know, because we have so much to offer people when they come here, the variety of experiences for a small town is huge. And I think that's one of the things the EDC, where the EDC comes in is to try to promote and, lack of a better word, share our stories, share our businesses, share our opportunities here for a, a increasingly stressed out uh, world that's trying to get outside and experience what we have here. At Four Seasons, I mean, it's we had this little slogan that wasn't used. We said Vermont, but closer. I mean, it, it's what people are looking for, the amount of stuff that has, you know, world-class canoeing to the biggest drop of ski areas in Connecticut to the Appalachian Trail running the ridge right next door. And it goes on and on what we can tell people, plus the level of arts and crafts here is, you know, I think unsurpassed for a town our size anywhere. Um, and there are, again, people just starting out, and there are people that are, are well established. So it's our job, and I'm, I so, you know, I own a business myself, and we've been in business farming in Cornwall for 40 years, which is not the easiest occupation either, but it's sort of a nurturing thing, and you can't expect everything to go right, but we have been able to nurture the business over time to the point now where we have full-time employees, and so that's good, but it's taken us a while to get to that spot. But so we understand how sometimes there are issues that need to be uh, worked on. But I think overall we found that if we work together as a community, um, you know, Cornwall's a pretty partisan place as far as, uh, you know, support of things. And we're just trying to um, keep your good efforts going and whatever we can do to organize our efforts um, we'll try to do and it's great to have Mayor Rubin whose family brought the rock and roll camp to uh, Cornwall and they called up so we want to have a rock and roll camp mm -hmm. uh, I said oh better talk to the library you don't want to say, go get a permit for that uh, <laughs> but anyway it's been a great addition and a great again something that who else would have thought of that but again it's been a great um, addition to the town to again have another offering that wasn't here five or ten years ago but what other town offers a rock and roll camp with, you know, top flight musicians. So thank you all, and um, we'll have a chance to talk later. And uh, again, Mayor will tell you what she's doing to try to connect us into the bigger world because there is a great story to tell here. Um, and Mayor, here thank she you. is. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, I know a lot of you, um, but definitely not all of you, and my name is Mayor Rubin. I'm on the Economic Development Commission, which is one of the things that when I, um, my husband and I decided to be here full time, and I said to myself, I think I need to maybe get involved in this lovely little town that, that we now live in um, full time, so I'm, I'm here for that reason. I wanted to get involved and learn more about how the town works. And, and do what I can to help it grow and prosper. So um, I'm not going to, this is, we have delicious food back there. This is really meant to be, you know, to uh, get to know you things. So I'll, like, I think I'll spend five minutes on these slides. But if anyone has questions as I do this, just about what the EDC does, what our, priori what our priorities have been, you know, what we hope to do in the future, um, please, as I'm talking, it doesn't need to be a very formal thing. I should make a note that Simon Hewitt isn't here tonight. He's our chair, um, but he couldn't make it um, tonight. He's out of town. You already know who Bianca is. Janet um, Carlson is at the back, and she's our board selectman rep on the EDC. Um, there are other members of the, we have nine active members, one honorary member who's also not here, but you'll see more of his name when we talk about the social media stuff. Um, <coughs> Jane is here. Who else is here? Richard is here. Who else is in the room? Maybe, you know, there's Richard. <laughs> so there's a few of us here tonight, just so you know who we are, um, out of the nine of us. <clears throat> and this is our mission statement for the EDC. So we are here to create, develop, and maintain a healthy and viable business climate, locale, and heritage in Cornwall 
to promote tolerance and acceptance of economic diversity and the right and need to work here in Cornwall. So that's sort of our, our high level mission. Um, we had some you know, key, key actions, key priorities that we accomplished last year as an EDC. Um, and we, um, one of the main things, Bianca and Gordon both talked about this, but one of the main things we do ongoing on the commission is just to market Cornwall as a great place to live and work. Um, we focus on that local pride. We try to you know, make sure that, that um, the diversity of our community is known to people who might be interested in moving here, or having businesses here. Um, we do promote and create town-wide events. So last year, you might remember that um, we brought back this idea of Cornwall Day, which I guess before my time was a thing. But you know, we, we brought it back in July. We hope to do that again and make it bigger, sort of planting a seed there last summer. And I think there's a lot more opportunity to, to you know, come together as we are tonight and talk about ways that we could make bigger events that attract um, people from other local <coughs> towns as well. And of course, we liaise with the selectmen in terms of what's happening in the town and infrastructure and supporting um, what the businesses need. And we also liaise with the commercial property owners to make sure that we can make the most of everything that we have here in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, so in terms of specifically our goals that we that we had last year, we um, continued this sort of idea of buy, hire, local in terms of our social media um, campaign. We did develop free Wi-Fi here in Cornwall Village, which was an investment to really improve that for the farmers market, but also for you know events and other things that happen here in the village. Um, we want to continue to maintain and develop more of those events that really bring people together and attract people to come to Cornwall and attract residents to spend time in their in their local hometown. Um, and we also represent um, the the regional sorry the regional um, tourism bureau. So I actually went to a couple meetings learning more about the Connecticut Tourism Bureau and making sure that we make the most of that. <clears throat> um, in terms of our local marketing, again, um, Neil throwing glasses in here tonight, but he does really all of this work. We have the Explore Cornwall CT website, which is very much linked into the CornwallConnecticut.org site, but it also stands alone because we felt the need to make sure that there was like a visitors only kind of um, site to. Um, you know, to let people know what Cornwall is all about. But if you go on there, you'll see there's lots of links between those two websites. We have our Instagram posts with, um, Frank thought he might be here tonight, but I guess he's not here. I don't know how much he likes that picture, but he must, he must get a giggle out of it. Um, this is highlighting a, a new business that we all know about the candle company that's down in Cornwall Bridge. Um, I don't think that she's here. I think her name's Andrea. I don't think that she's here tonight, but um, so just highlighting the activity, and this is, you know, for anyone, I mean, a real challenge for Neil, honestly, is content, right? Like, what mm -hmm. images does he have? What, it could be little videos, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. um, so he does an amazing job and tries to reach out to people, but if you have a beautiful photo or something new about your business that you want to highlight, please, please email the EDC. Neil can post and is always, always looking for things to post. So. Please know that that is always available. Um, I talked a little bit about the, we, we improved, there was already um, a, you know, initiative to do the free Wi-Fi in West Cornwall. Then last year we did it here in Coral Village. And <clears throat> this year we're looking at, um, and you know, obviously this is all about how important it is <laughs> to have that connectivity, not just for businesses, but for, for um, visitors. So we're looking into that for Cornwall Bridge. It is quite an investment, as you can imagine, in terms of um, some of the infrastructure that has to happen. So but we're working on that. This is a little bit more about the events. And again, um, we hope to Cornwall Day will become sort of a bigger and more exciting event. We hope to get more business owners like all of you to, to talk about it and um, come together and talk about ways that we can you know, make it more of a like schedule of events and make it um, more of a local attraction. We have the 12 days of Christmas thing that Bianca has done with a, a little team of people that amazing. It's such a 
sweet, awesome way to highlight the, all of the artists that we have here in Cornwall. I'm always completely amazed walking by those windows. Um, and any other ideas? We would love to hear from all of you about other ways that we can bring more, more events and more people to come visit our town and to enjoy living here. Um, in terms of just supporting the Board of Selectmen and you know making sure we're doing everything we can to attract um, new businesses and <coughs> um, new residents, again, this is just highlighting a lot of what Neil does in terms of our social media, um, in terms of like you know sometimes little formal gets on the map of there. Oh, there's Frank. You missed your funny picture, Frank. <laughs> 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 um, welcome. <laughs> Um, so this is sort of highlighting, but again, the, probably the most important thing here is just like, please, please, please let us know if you have things you want to post, if you have a special new thing happening at your business, whatever it is, we would love to hear about it and love to post it. Um, and this is what I mentioned, the CT visit, this is the Connecticut um, tourism site, so I sit on the Western Connecticut for a representative from Cornwall on the Western Connecticut tourism board and there's a lot of things here if anyone's interested in this is very fr not familiar to you i can talk to you about it individually because you can go on this ct visit site and like become a partner um, and besides listing just your business information and your hours you can also again list special things that your business is doing or special events that are happening um, and if you tag if you're active on your own social media which i know some of you are um, you can also, in certain posts, if you want to tag CT Visit and you know attract even more attention, they also sometimes repost things and, and share things more broadly. So it's a nice way to get your business name out there a little bit, a little bit in a bigger audience. <coughs> um, the bridge is back open. Everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, that's like. So those are hard days when the bridge is closed, right? The little entryway to to our oasis of Cornwall. So that's that's all the more formal slides um, that I have here. I don't know if there's any questions specifically about that. If you have any questions for Bianca, for Gordon. Yeah. Um, oh, I just my my speechwriter is on vacation, so I forgot to say <laughs> some important things. One, looking forward. Two things. Uh, and Priscilla, Pavel, and Janet Carlson is here fellow select people. Um, two um, other points. Uh, one thing the town is looking at is there is this infrastructure grant money available and some of the things they're talking about is making towns and transportation centers more pedestrian and bicycle friendly and people may know that we we are part of now the Western New England Greenway, and you'll start seeing more signs up about that, a bike route that goes from outside New York City up to Montreal, so you'll be mm -hmm. seeing more bicycles probably coming through. But there is a program that will allow us to start looking at things like parking and crosswalks and stuff, and having mm -hmm. observed that people aren't really, know there's a crosswalk in Cornwall Bridge, you know, linking both sides of the road where you know when the market comes back is going to be really important. So we're going to undertake some sort of collaborative process to try to make our towns more visitor friendly from a pedestrian standpoint and a bicycle or alternative transportation standpoint, which would also include trying to get uh, electrical vehicle charging stations in our metro areas in town. Uh, so try to get a couple of them up, and again by having that, that will bring more people mm -hmm. and have them stay. In and see what we've got going on here. So that that's going to be a collaborative process. We hope to get going um, this spring and, and have people's input as far as what's needed, what we should apply for, because there is sort of a one-shot uh, deal where the state is recipient of some infrastructure money and it's right up our alley as far as a uh, place that um, we're sort of like we can be a black hole, we're currently a black hole of electric charging stations and things. So, but there's a lot of traffic here, so there, there's an impetus and we're on, again, not only a, we have a Route 7, we have a railroad, we have bike road, we have, we can come down the river and boat. So we have all these different forms of transportation. We have that from we can hike through. Um, so again, we're going to be looking at some things that will help us become more friendly to the residents and 
and make it so if there's, you know, crosswalks are appropriate, this is probably the time we're going to look at putting some in. So, again, that's something that came up. The other thing that came up, the town does have this plan of conservation and development, um, and that will be looked at, um, every, that look, yeah, it looks at every year. And so the town does have like 71 action goals that we're trying to do to um, not just help uh, maintain the environmental quality here, but also look at what things we need to increase uh, as far as, as developing social infrastructure because it's hard to maintain your maternity ward at Sharon Hospital we're all working for if you don't have active young families here and good schools to attract those active, active young families that could live in a bunch of different places. So again, a lot of this is all integrated, but what do we do as a town to, you know, improve, grow, um, we all like it here, but there are things that could be improved, such things as we are starting to roll out after years of pestering. Uh, there will be, hopefully 2023 will be the year that fiber optic cable comes to Cornwall and to every house. So again, that will increase <coughs> the opportunities or the abilities for people, especially if they are in media or finance and need to move a lot of data to live here. So again, something that the EDC and the town has been pushing for a long time may be coming and uh, again will help residents and visitors. So, glad to answer any questions. Anybody has any questions? Or you can see me as we all enjoy Susan's handiwork. Mm -hmm. Patty. Um, I'm wondering about, I know it's one of the many objectives that are on the list um, that are in the town plan for development of a river walk in Cornwall Bridge. Um, along the river there, which I think is really kind of tied into doing something about the Neoweld building, an unsightly commercial building. And I'm just wondering if there's a committee or somebody who can help research I mean, that's, ground, ground fund money or ground super yeah, fund money. That's, that, you will hear more about that. There have been people, and what's interesting is, is that Cornwall, according to one realtor this week, it's Cornwall's hot. You know, we don't think of ourselves as hot, but apparently we're hot. But, I mean, the amount, because the real estate market is very, um, you know, it's important, but it's also, this is a very popular place to be, so there's very little commercial space, residential space. So, as the obvious places fill up, the, the less obvious places uh, come into focus. So there are people that have expressed an interest in the Neowell property in West Portland underneath the bridge, okay. and, the, and so the town may take some action as far as because there's back taxes owed for years on that property to have some sort of tax auction or something fairly soon to free up that property oh. for reuse. Because it's a nice again, road, it's a nice road to It's really a wonderful road. Like racks and visitor center. Yeah, I mean that, if that little area on the bridge has so much potential and we may, mm -hmm. we may be doing something fairly soon to again um, make, bring that little piece of the town back into productive reuse. Good, that's good to so, hear. Yeah. Mm. Any other questions? Glad to talk to you all anytime. But thanks all for coming and let's uh let's have something to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We have Thank Susan Sakari's yummy food back there. So mm -hmm. if anyone yeah. has any questions specifically for any of us, let's know. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Frank. Uh, yeah. Sort of a general question before you break up. Sure. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm late, so I might have missed it. But is there consideration for how to drive traffic and encourage traffic across the bridge? And are, uh, are there any things that we can do uh, to try to help people who aren't aware of West Cornwall um, to become more aware of West Cornwall? Well, I think we did put signs up. Uh, without permission, same restaurants and shops up there. Yeah. Um, so we have done a little bit of signage there, and I think again with this effort of the EDC to really promote what's there, and again to re remind people what's there, promote it. I think there there is an organized effort to promote and to promote West Cornwall, and now that we have mayor plugged into the state efforts because. That is probably the most publicized building in Connecticut next to maybe Mystic or the state capitol or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's right by the airport, it's everywhere. And as I said earlier, people have 
great uh, memories and, mm -hmm. and feelings about it. So sure. again, we're just trying to get as a town the message out. Yeah, Ronnie. Right. Um, where do people park generally to look at the bridge? Well, what we we did also we have we did develop that little parking lot down by the bend, which is mm -hmm. again another um, unknown. Um, resource, but that's what we're encouraging, so we do have some Is signage there on there. Yeah, so that shows a map of where you are and yeah. what to find. We could do, yeah, we do have a little, we do have a, we do have a kiosk there, and again, we can, help, we can always update that um, as far as what's here and where you are and what you, what you could be doing, and I was talking to somebody about our little we need to try and the problem, the fact that this is not in Cornwall Bridge, it's in West Cornwall. It automatically throws people off when they come here asking for answers. It's not here either, so where, where is that? Um, but at least we've got a sign up again saying it's in West Cornwall, you know, it's a bridge. And I think Thanks, Stacy. Yeah. Oh, there you go. No. I was going to say, I mean, it, the EDC isn't really here to be like event planners, obviously, but you know we did plan C, so to speak, with bringing back corn all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of opportunity besides the 12 days of Christmas, which is a lovely, you know, event. A lot of opportunity in this community to yeah. do things with art and music and so much mm -hmm. more. But I think that events like this, where business owners can talk to each other, and the EDC is here to facilitate and support and collaborate. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to me, Kent has their sidewalk sale days. Millerton used to have that music thing. I don't know if they have it anymore. But anyway, every town sort of has their, sure. you know, their thing. And that kind of gets you the awareness, like growing a little bit more and more of what, when you come here for a reason, then you're like, oh, wait, I, there's more here than I thought. Right. So that's kind of, I think, one vision of trying to get us all to talk more and make that type For of sure. event happen maybe more often. I think we have a unique ge geographic challenge, which is that from Route 7, which is the artery of Kent, obviously it's very visible. Right. Uh, the village is invisible because it's off of the main roads, and West Cornwall is invisible because it's depressed geographically. So it's it's invisible from Route 7 because mm -hmm. it's a little bit lower. So I guess. I guess the thing that would be interesting as a conversation to me would be what can we as a as a group um, build consensus around how to drive traffic and raise the visibility of our little towns, mm -hmm. which are incredibly charming and incredibly mm -hmm. idyllic and incredibly iconic for West Connect for Northwest Connecticut. So I'm just trying. I don't. I don't have the solution. It's just something that I want to sort of spark the conversation. Because I think it is really important to figure out how to drive people to locations, right? A restaurant is one way of doing it, but there are lots of businesses that we want to drive, you know, consumers to. Right, sure. Maybe we could do a Google Map thing, a, a cooperative thing where it pinpoints businesses on the Google. Like you do a paid thing, you pay money to Google when they... So if somebody looks up Cornwall, they can see a map and they can see where all the businesses are. You, you can do that yourself. Yeah. Pit your business. But if we did a joint effort, it might work out. It might be more economical. Mm. Well, is, isn't that on the on the Civic Lift platform um, where you register your business? And I, I think all businesses are listed there. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So. On Civic Lift. Yeah, we all geo target our business, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I have a question about it. What about. Is there a possibility of similar signage to what's on Route 7 at the four corners? Uh, because there's an awful lot yes. of traffic yeah. that turns left. Yes. There, there, there is a sign there. We did put up a sign that says... This is shops and stuff? Uh, I'm not sure it says shops, but it says covered bridge, I think. Straight yeah, right. and ski area yes. that way. Yes. I think but then you have we the put shops up, and restaurants yeah. sign yeah. at the... Yeah. yeah, we could put up... We could, we could ask we to put up ask. more, you know, shops and restaurants now that... Now that I see so much traffic real. turning there. Correct. That's and that's that's a key gateway we could put up. Could have. And also all the skiing traffic yeah. Yeah. passes through there. Yeah, I think so. So we could point them your way. Yeah. Right. And that's one thing I've talked to Mohawk about is is working, you know, with that <laughs> incredible uh, traffic flow to get, you know, this has been a, a tough year 
weather-wise thinking about skiing, but uh, you know, integrating the Mohawk Mountain into the business uh, promotion of the town, uh, they do a great job. But I mean, getting it, it getting it more integrated is one of the goals. And I don't know if <clears throat> they might be interested to have some kind of bulletin board at yeah. the ski place that could have local flyers or yeah, 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 yeah. So, notices or something. So we open up the uh, we're opening up that dialogue. I get asked directions all the time, all the time, and I'd say the top three or four uh, questions, the top question is, where's the covered bridge? Certainly. Um, and then the next set is, it sort of depends on the season, where's the ski area, where's the bathroom, where's the gas station, and where can I get something to eat? Those are certainly the top five questions every day you're asked. Every day one of those is asked, if not all of them. If not some, I mean numerous, all, all the time. Covered bridge, number one. Um, the area in season, and then the order of bathroom, gas station, and food, or it's just the, the various. Yeah, we do have we do have a a pamphlet that does say visit Cornwall. This most of the businesses and well, in, explains in this that case, stuff. I'm Hopefully able to people. direct people yeah. to these locations. Yes. So it's, we could use a public bathroom over we'll over bridge. <laughs> yep, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Daisy. Uh, sorry, I was late. And if this was covered, just I'll touch base with someone afterwards. But uh, years ago, there, I thought there was funding, and we talked many, many times about the crosswalk in Cornwall Bridge. Yeah, I did. You talk. covered it. Yeah, I mean okay. that. Right, yeah, by the time we got a design, the funding went away, but we do have a design for something. Uh -huh. So we hope to align that with some new money that's coming. So we are looking at making the West Cornwall and Cornwall Bridge, you know, as I said, more pedestrian, more uh, bike alternative uh, transportation friendly. Get some charging, hopefully a charging station in each hamlet to bring some people in. Right. So Sorry. that's a pretty mm -hmm. simple, <laughs> sounds like a simple plan, but as we know, it takes, <clears throat> takes some time, but we hope, you know, again, to focus on that this, this spring and, and get in there with some grants, because we've been pretty lucky to pull some things off. Yes, Mike's had his hand up. Is, is, the, is the town um, supporting the, uh, like the village or the, for the, in terms of the um, farmer's market, like, I'm not sure if it's like come if I come here, West Cornwall. Is there like a is it a dueling farmers market town? <laughs> well, again, I'm just like I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I feel bad for only coming here yeah. and not supporting West Cornwall. And I think each place has again. It's part of our our heritage is to have these three to eight villages of which confuses <laughs> people even who live here. But I think each place has um, its own. Each place has its own reason for for having a market, and I think also not too many years ago there was, you know, general stores in three or four different places that people, you know, decided to go here, not there. So the main thing is to to have an increased variety, which which may be confusing to some people, but I think people find their their way in again trying to promote different different venues. And let people make their own choice, but keeping keeping the activity level up is, is the main thing. Any questions? Yeah, yes. I just wanted to, to to kind of touch base a little bit on what Frank was saying and some of the other things that we've been talking about as far as traffic, increasing traffic, and bringing more and more people to West Cornwall because that's where Three Guys is. I'm Mike, by the way. I'm, uh, I'm the only guy. <laughs> Just so you know. Me, <laughs> myself, and I. Okay. okay. So all three of us. All three of us are right here. I have multiple the personalities. <laughs> Regardless of that fact, it is a dangerous corner yeah. Yeah. where I am. And uh, I, I have every intention of increasing uh, traffic in town um, and uh, one of the things that I have been sort of on the sly on the side working on is a traffic calming
project in my mind about how to sort of reduce the speed around that corner. One of the things I can say about my parking lot is it's one of the pop most popular in town. Uh, there's a, a, a number of people that pull in to get their mail and a number of people that pull in to get their skis uh, and their bikes and whatever else it is that I offer and whatever else it is that, uh, that Bianca offers during the summer at the, uh, on, the, on her lawn. Um, and it's a very popular place and I think perhaps uh, you know, trying to think through, and I'm willing to, to, to collaborate and to talk to people and entertain ideas and, 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 and perhaps put something together that we can submit at a state representative level um, to get some, it's a state road. Let's, let's think about that sort of thing. I want to, I want to, I want to make you know, we've been talking about, and, and Gordon's been talking about, uh, uh, you know, pedestrian uh, traffic and, and bike traffic. We've got two bike stores in West Cornwall, and let's 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 you know work on that sort of thing. And speed speed side, maybe, or something. And yeah. More yeah. than yeah. that, but yeah, yeah, there's lots of ideas, and kind of a I, it is. It's an incredible challenge. I think it's something that uh, merits. Uh, a lot of discussion and uh, a lot of research and you know talking to people about how we can kind of uh, calm the traffic as it comes through that section of town because I'm uh, terrified to cross the street sometimes um, but you know again I think it's something that we can do and I just think that that as a, as a group you know I'm, I'm happy to entertain uh, you know, suggestions and emails and telephone calls and all that sort of thing. If you're interested in talking about it, feel free. What I can see, Mike, is like this spring we'll have a collaborative meeting maybe in West Cornwall mm -hmm. and in Cornwall Bridge just to be on site where, mm -hmm. you know, ground zero where these, mm -hmm. where the triangles are and where the hills are and where the corners are. Mm -hmm. And again, get some professional people to help us out. Mm -hmm. With the design that, that specialize in in this traffic calming or whatever we're doing, because people say we have a, we have a traffic problem. What's going on with the problem is that there isn't any traffic. So it depends on who's who's looking at the problem, how they're defining the certain problems. But again, we can anticipate we can anticipate more traffic, more parking, and see how ways so people are not big thing is so people are not backing out into traffic coming down the hill. I mean, it seems like a good place to start. If we get that going, uh, maybe redesign that particular parking lot somehow. Um, we should be able to make some progress. We're not the only, yeah, a lot of places are looking at that and they said there's this funding cycle that may come up that be a good timing for it. In Vermont recently, um, and it definitely made me slow down, um, the speed you know, came up at your speed, and if you were fast, it said naughty. <laughs> and if you were slow, it said nice. And my kids were like, Ma. And I was like, I'm going nice. <laughs> it was just, it definitely made me react a lot more. Yes, the naughty match. I would not. Yes. <laughs> you mentioned triangles, and, and that was something I've been thinking about. So I just wanted to throw the idea out to all the thinkers in the room is that when I get asked about Cornwall, which is as, you know, not as Richard, probably, but often enough, I try to describe it as a triangle. Mm -hmm. With it's a, a small town with three centers, and so this triangular shape may give rise to a way to communicate where all the various businesses are in various seasons. The farmers' market in the summer is here and there, and all that kind of stuff. But the triangle is such a simple shape, so I just thought I'd throw that out as a, a, a design idea for. It. I love that. I love that design idea. So I'll, I'll pass that on to Neil too, because we could probably do a lot with that concept even when it comes to events too. Like go to this part of the triangle first, and then this one. Mm -hmm. So that's a great idea. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jason Coppola. I'm with the Trinity Retreat Center. Uh, I'm the executive director there. Uh, I just the, the topic of parking came up very briefly. So we have. 
I think about a little over an acre on railroad, and uh, we're in discussion of possibly donating that to the town for a parking lot. So that's something we are uh, uh, discussing uh, with you know the top people at Trinity Church. But um, prior to me starting, it was a topic of discussion, and it, it did come up again today prior to me arriving to here. So. We are working to hopefully donate that property to all of you for parking. So folks, folks who do want to visit the downtown area and walk over to the bridge, at least they have a, a place to park. So I will definitely keep uh, Gordon up, up to par with that. It's tough to find an acre in the Well, We have 130 something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's all good news. Man. Yeah. So uh, we will definitely keep you all informed. So. Yeah. So anybody can top that off? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> You've already got some offers of electronic, electric charging stations, locations, but mm -hmm. an acre of parking is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions? You know where to find us all. And it, the main thing is just to know, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention that I forgot, was the thought came up is to have this meeting again happen in a happier time. Maybe summertime out on the green, we the park and rec has started these cons, concerts up, which have been when we had a couple hundred people here, which is you know like on a summer's evening, and we could have like a a pre party, probably can have an after party, but have a pre party <laughs> or a pre meeting, and then have a concert and potluck, and see all your neighbors, bring your family, and all that kind of stuff would be uh, was a thought to try to take full advantage of that okay. little initiative that's that's going on. It's been really successful. Are you imagining that? Uh, very tiny businesses could, you know, have a little table and say, "Here I am, and I'm doing this here in Cornwall." Is I'm sure there's a, there's a place for that. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. That would be fabulous. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. more. There's more things germinating all the time, which I think is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, "Well, here's this art magazine that's being published on top of Dibble Hill." I, said, well, <laughs> I grew up on Dibble Hill. I didn't see the big publishing company last time I grew up, but there it is. You know, go figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Just a lot of good things, and I think the other thing too is I see Steve and Danielle here who have a new slow screening business underneath the bridge yeah. in Cornwall Bridge. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going on here that may not be obvious to people. I see Jennifer Clark, Clark Outdoors is here, and again, they have a she helps get a great kayaking thing going in the spring. And if we could hear about that, I mean, it's fun for me to watch and not think I'm ever going to be doing that. But it it's sort of fills up West Cornwall with some very interesting, talented kayakers, and the people are wondering what to do on a on a third Sunday in May. Third Sunday in May, <laughs> just go and watch you know, people go upside down and the bridge and go upside down. So anyway, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on that I guess part of the message here is there's a vehicle to publicize your stuff. If you want publicity, there's now a way to get your word out, who you are, what you're doing. Uh, New rates at the CD rates at the Iron Bank, anniversary rates really good. Um, you know, there's a lot of different business messages that could come out here, and now we're formalizing a way to put that out into what we call Greater Cornwall, which goes mm -hmm. a long way. So. Um, Stacy, yes. One last thing for people, because you just mentioned a couple. I mean, everyone goes on their phone, and that's how they find businesses, but I will say, having hundreds or thousands of people come through the inn, we still get people that go through our Cornwall rack and pull, you know, pull the maps out and ask us where should I go, what should I do? So if any business here that sort of welcomes tourists, um, let me know and I'd happily display your stuff. And if you're on that map, that cartoony map thing, mm -hmm. that's wonderful because I just circle and I tell them where to go, drive here, go, here's the farmer's market. And so mm -hmm. people still do like paper too. Yeah. So if you have anything, please yeah. feel free to drop it off. That's, mm -hmm. that's a perfect example of why mm -hmm. we need to get together and, and talk, right? Because it's such a simple, I know Richard, you have a nice, board for flyers there too. Yeah. It's such a nice way of making it. But even we do the same thing with we have a woodworking business, but we also have your and I have a counter full of little things just like Stacy and cards and pamphlets and things like that, mainly just from uh, the Cornwalls and 
and Kent just to try to keep people. That's great. Mike is not as enthusiastic like so. Gotta get those postcards out. I've got many of those things. I have flyers. I have all these sorts of things for my own business. But we do have a whole rack full of things that people, mm. and, and one of the things that he, uh, uh, the Greenway, uh, the uh, uh, New England uh, Greenway uh, has, are maps, uh, bike routes, things like that. Uh, those are just mm -hmm. about, they had little maps that they had uh, that were also available online. But mm -hmm. the paper maps have flown out of there. Mm -hmm. I actually put together a series of, uh, uh, hiking maps, biking maps, and uh, camping maps, and put them in there. And <clears throat> I'll have to redo all of those because those flew out of there. The, I mean, it's been actually a couple months now, and I'm remiss in my duties. But uh, yeah, the rack that we have it empties out regularly. It's crazy. I mean, You're right. Wrong. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in the same stroke, I mean, I, I know the bank is a bit more targeted towards locals, but in the same way, we have a, a, a local support, local businesses, uh, bulletin board, and it gets very well visited. So everyone here is more than welcome to bring your, your flyers and, and whatnot. They go out the door immediately. We run out very quickly. So. I'd like to yes, dear. Party, last, co last comment. Here we are getting. The road is to CDFD used to do a birthday calendar and all the local businesses would be on there. So if I needed an electrician, I would look on there. If I needed whatever I needed, that's where I would go when I first moved here. It's not happening anymore, but maybe the I think it's have to do you know, I think it's something it's similar yeah. where people can, the calendar gets paid for by a tiny <coughs> contribution that people make to put their so-and-so's birthday on the calendar, actually on you know, May 4th or whatever. But the main thing is the top part is all advertising for local businesses, mostly services, not so much tourism. They're doing it this year. They are? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I, I sent a check it somewhere, so I didn't think so. <laughs> 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 services, that's something I'm always hunting for. I need to with it. Okay, so anyway, thank you all for coming. And Make sure you sign your email because yep. communication is a very important part of this and we're trying to get make sure we have a good way to contact all of you. So make sure you put your email back. Thank you so much. Oh, you should. Oh, yeah, that's it. He's going to see me. Or a lot so that's good. And like the way, and hey, you know,